splicing. Mess this up and your business is done. Another no fluff, real world tip from the zone. Splicing. So important, I can't overestimate its importance in your quality of your job. I might make it sound like it's uh, uh, a real area of danger. It is if you don't do it right. Follow what we're talking about, how we do it, you won't go wrong. So we have two different types of splices here. One is a grease tube where you use a copper crimp and then you insert the splice into the grease tube. Best way to go. Second best is this looks like a, a standard wire nut. But what this is, it's also grease filled. However, there's no crimp. You just put this on like you would a traditional wire splice. Done properly, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice splice. But the weakness is, a lot of times uh, a landscaper will catch a wire. You have two wires going into this and then if they catch it and it goes like, they'll pull, they'll pull the splice out of the nut. And then you're out there trying to hunt and, hunt and peck to find the other end of the wire. Not fun. And, and you'll be frustrated by it. You use a copper crimp on your splice. Done properly, your splice will be as strong as the original wire. They might pull it out of the ground, but what you'll find out, it's, it's hanging up like a clothesline. It's still intact. So let me show you how to do this, uh, this splice. You want to splice this wire and this wire together. This would be the simplest splice you're going to make, but for demonstration purposes, uh, this is uh, what, we're, what we're doing. Now, if you look at the wire, one of the conductors has ribs on it, and the other is smooth. So what you want to do is you want to splice the one with the ribs to the other side with the, with the ribs, and that'll ensure down the road that uh, there's, you have no problem with uh, uh, changes in polarity. If you get it messed up, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, it's not going to really matter to you. You have to separate the conductors. And this is the part that's, at the end of the day, you'll find your fingers, you know, feel the effects. You separate them. When you're out in the field, you'll be doing this so quick you'll be amazed. Okay, so we have the, now we have the four ends. We've found the ribs, the ribbed wires, and we're going to now strip them. You can use a pair of conventional wire strippers. You'll find that it's much easier to make the, uh, the strip with this type of tool. It's automatic. Uh, very little stress on your uh, on your hands and fingers. You line it up with the proper slot. Just like that. Just like that. Now the thing to be careful of, especially if you're using this type of, uh, of stripper, is if you cut in too deep and you start cutting some of these individual wire strands, now you potentially have reduced the, the, the diameter of the wire, which in effect reduces its ability to carry power. So now instead of a, I've seen sometimes where a number 12 wire, which this is a number 12, go down to a 14. It's counterintuitive. The higher you go means you're going down in size. So you have to be careful of that. Don't One strand isn't going to kill you, but you just want to make sure you're not butchering it. Okay, so we have the copper crimp. We're going to gently join these two ends together. And that's more to control the strands, the strands of the wire. 
So that way when you're sliding the crimp over, you don't get like a wild hair going off and then all of a sudden it's, uh, it's wrapping underneath the crimp and you're actually not getting it into the splice. So that's perfect. That's perfect. Now, you could utilize this part to close down the crimp. Effective, but I like to do things the best way. I use a Buchanan crimping tool. The crimp fits in there. You're going to slide it in, line it up properly, really crush it. Now you're, you're crushed in on four, so four sides. It's closed in. You're not breaking that apart. Then you trim the excess. Create a mess. Now that's, you know, you're not, you're not pulling that apart. So now we get down to how are we going to waterproof this connection? You use a grease tube. There's grease, dielectric grease, from here to about three-eighths of an inch from the top to allow for the wire going in and the expansion. So what you do is you open it up. You can see it's filled with the grease. You put your wire in. Now that's burying it in the grease. It's buried in the grease. You could feel the pressure. And what you do is you pull both wires to the, to the side while keeping, letting the wire stay all the way at the bottom. And then you're just snapping the top. You can hear the snap. And that is a, uh, that is a tight fit. That is a tight fit now. Uh, waterproof. You could have that sitting in a puddle of water, and the water is not going to get to that wire. And sometimes when you're in, when you're in a landscape environment, uh, the, the soil gets waterlogged, and it does affect uh, some splices. So that's one. I'll show you this one a little bit quicker. And this is more real life speed about what you're going to do out in the field as opposed to the slow-mo of what I was, uh, what I was doing. Uh, that's, that's more or less the speed that you're going to pick up to uh, versus the one that I was showing you more for instructions. So that, that's, a, that's a perfect splice for this application. Now, most splices, you're going to have multiple wires coming in. You might have four for this size tube. If, you ha if you're trying to splice together more than four wires, then you go to a larger tube and a larger crimp. You will use the same crimping tool, but it has a, a slide that will accommodate larger and smaller size crimps. If you're, do, if you're putting your splices together like this, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. I've never seen a better way to splice. Uh, you're, uh, you're really doing a, a great service to the homeowner. And that's, uh, that's splicing. Splicing 101.